please stand for the arrival of their excellencies, the Governor General of the Commonwealth of Australia, General the Honourable David Hurley and Mrs Linda Hurley. Thank you. Please be seated. Jambarabaro Marambang Maranja. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> um, and a very special uh, warm welcome to their excellencies, the Governor General, the Commonwealth of Australia, General the Honourable David Hurley and Mrs Hurley. Uh, and to all of our guests here for the official opening of the new National Archives ground floor visitor experience. Uh, at our office and I'm just turning off my phone and maybe I could uh, remind everybody if you could have your phone on silent. Um, so thank you very much all of you for coming here to uh, join us this morning uh, at our new national office, National Archives of Australia, Murulangalang, here in Canberra. And I can say gurubari ninyalgar murulangalang, good morning and welcome to everybody here to the National Archives. And may I start with an acknowledgement of country. Uh, Naji in Jamali, Namri, Gurmal, Walgalu, Walabaloa, Nunawal, Wiradjuri, Majigang Yanibu, Jandu. I acknowledge the Nambri, the Gurmal, the Walgalu, Walabaloa, Nunawal, and Wiradjuri people upon whose lands the city of Canberra has been built. And I pay my respects to their elders, past and present. And I extend my respect to all First Nations people joining us today, either here in person or online. And of course, uh, Paul, a great welcome to you, and we'll be hearing a bit more from you in, in a moment. Um, and look, as I observe these protocols, acknowledgement of country, uh, can I say that I am very proud uh, of the National Archives of Australia as the first national cultural institution here in the National Triangle to display dual language signage on our building. Uh, you would have noticed uh, on the outside of the building, wherever the National Archives is, is presented, on the exterior of the building, we also have uh, our Nunawal Nambri word, Murulangalang, uh, to represent uh, the National Archives. Murulangalang is a word that was uh, uh, developed with us, uh, with the assistance of, of Paul Howells. Um, Murulangalang means caves or rock shelters, which are found here on country around this area. And these caves, the rock shelters, are contained hand stencils uh, left by um, the ancestors of the Nambri and the Nunawal. Uh, and so those caves and rock shelters holding those hand stencils are safe places for the preservation of cultural memory. Uh, human, you know, the hand, a human record, contact. And it's a place where uh, memory, cultural memory of one generation can be transmitted to the next. And so that's such a wonderful word to describe what we do here at the National Archives. Here we are all about preserving our collective memory and transmitting that memory from one generation to the next. Now this achievement and finding this word would not have been possible without the guidance of Paul Howes, Nambri Nunawal custodian and a great friend of the National Archives. And so could I now invite you, Paul, up to the uh, podium to give us a welcome to country. Thank you, Paul. Wurugawuri, thank you, Dave. And Jumburaburu Marambang Maranya. Good morning, everyone. Abaladu Yaba Nyambri Wogalu Wiradri Nyang. I'm speaking Nyambri Wogalu Wiradri language. Yilangalangbu, Gibabangu Wogabu Migabu, Deranilbang Maranya, Their Excellencies, Nyari. Injamali, Nyambri, Gumal, Wogalu, Wallabal, Nunawal, Mujigang, Yanang, Bujandu. My respects to Nyambri, Gumal, Wogalu, Wallabaloa, Nunawa elders past and present. Nyari, Injamarabu, Mujigangu, Nurumbanjigu, Ninyiridu, 
Maranya. My respects to all people and all elders from all parts of the country. Nyambri, Wawgalu, Wallabala Nunawa, Bujiyangyan and Bujiyano, Dara. Nyambri Nunawa people, welcome you all to country. Mambawara, Naminyagu, Wujagabinya, Wura Daraigu, Winningalagu, Baligu. Looking to see and listening to hear and learning to understand. Yinja Malgiri, Yinja Marabu, Yinja Mali. Respect, uphold, take responsibility, be patient, be slow, be polite. Yinja Mara, Magagiri, Biringa, Bogongu, Dirinda. Respect can be found in the journey of the Bogong moths in the mountains. Yinja Mara, Bala Birada, Bira Bina, Bira Wura, Win Yambi Nunawadara. Respect can be found in the rivers quietly moving through. Yambri Nunawal country. Yinja Mara Bala Walamwanga Dabu, Murun Matan Dabu, Banmayu Maradu, Gurungam Bira, Yambri Nunawal Dara. Respect can be found in the grinding stones and the carved trees made long ago on country. Murun Waginya, Yinja Mara Murun Muru, Wirun Bira Dara. A respectful way of life cares for country. Yinja Mara, Wirin Bira Marandu Gubu, Giyira Gubu, Yandu Gubu. Respect is taking responsibility for the now, the past, the present, and the future. This welcome to country is made in the spirit of peace and a desire for harmony for all peoples of the modern ACT and surround. And our main aim as local custodians is to establish an atmosphere of mutual respect through the acknowledgement of our ancestors and the recognition of our rights to declare our special place in the pre and post contact of the region. We've cared for Mother Earth since the dawn of time. An evidence of our sovereignty, our occupation, our ownership can be seen everywhere throughout this country. Our signature is in the land, not just our DNA. The more we look after country, the more it looks after us. Respect everything living and growing, uh, everything's connected, not just environmentally, but also spiritually. The land, the plants, the animals. The mountains, the rivers, environmentally and spiritually connected to us all. Underneath the concrete and the steel of our cities and our country towns, there's a rich, powerful, compelling First Nation history in this country. A 65,000 plus history, which is now a shared history that belongs to all of us. And we all have a responsibility in looking after this great country, this great place of ours. The law of the land talks about giving respect and honour to all people in all parts of the country, being patient, being polite, being gentle, and then people will respect you. Hold fast to each other, empower each other, respect everything living and growing. In conclusion, on behalf of our uh, matriarchs and patriarchs, our, our elders, our families, uh, we say Gurubari welcome, and Yinja Mara, Mara Mara Nia Nia Girama Maranya, Respect shapes us and lifts up the people. Uh, before I close, I want to play a, a welcome song on the Yidaki, on um, the didgeridoo, uh, for everyone. And I will invite uh, their excellencies to join me on the tapping sticks.
Wow. <laughs> well, thank you, Paul. Burugowuri. And Burugowuri, Your Excellencies, thank you very much uh, for that. Welcome to country. And thank you, Your Excellencies, for, um, for extending your participation into that, uh, into that act. Uh, and thank you as well, Paul uh, Wurugawuri, again, for all the work you do uh, with us here at the National Archives um, to help us understand our role uh, to work for all Australians uh, in our responsibility to preserve and transmit cultural memory. It's really greatly appreciated. And look, and I'm also very pleased to say so many very special guests here today with us uh, to celebrate this occasion. Of course, Their Excellencies, uh, uh, Parliamentary members, David Smith, it's very nice to have you here with us. Uh, Margaret Reid, whose uh, name is still on a plaque outside this building, it's delightful. You're a great friend of the archives and it's wonderful to have you um, here today. Uh, the members of the National Archives Advisory Council, uh, represented by our chair here, well, represented by a number of our members, but uh, acknowledging in particular our chair, Dr. Denver Beanland. Uh, Department and Agency Heads, uh, my colleagues from cultural institutions, uh, Secretary Chris Moratis from the Attorney General's Department. Chris, it's great for you to be here today. Thank you very much for joining us. Members of the Diplomatic Corps, I see several of our, our friends from the Diplomatic Corps, and I believe we have the Dean of the Corps here this morning, uh, Her Excellency Ninetta Barbarescu, Ambassador for Romania. I hope she was able to make it. Ninetta, are you here? No? Oh, well. well, in that case, Christoph. Uh, it's very nice to see you. Um, Mr Takahashi, it's very nice to see you. And other members of the Diplomatic Corps, it's great to have you here. Um, members of the cultural collecting community, including, uh, I will mention my counterpart from the ACT government, Danny Wickman, it's very great to have you here with us. Um, and uh, former Directors General of the National Archives, George Nichols over there, great to see you, George, and Brian over there. Thank you so much for coming in and joining us for this very, very special day. Always part of the archives family. It's good to, good to have you here. Uh, now, many of you may recall, we did have plans for the big launch uh, back in March of this year, but of course, uh, COVID-19 intervened somewhat and we were forced to postpone and uh, regather, re, re, um, reconstitute ourselves, can I say, and uh, conduct this event today in this COVID safe uh, environment. Look, over, over the years, this, uh, this historic building here would have um, uh, hosted thousands of, of gatherings uh, almost a century ago when it was uh, first constructed and opened. And over that time, it's had numerous facelifts and redesigns along the way. Uh, as the most recent in a long line of tenants, uh, we at the National Archives are very proud to have contributed to this latest incarnation of this, uh, of this building. And we've worked with the building owners, uh, e.g., and I understand Michael uh, Noblet is here, Noble, I should say, is here. Good to see you here um, from e.g., Michael. Uh, partnering with e.g. to bring forward this latest uh, renovation and redesign of the building. And I might say, Chris, uh, without any uh, additional funding whatsoever, it was all done through very shrewd re renegotiation. Uh, not shrewd, very friendly, I should say. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> renegotiation of, uh, of the lease and lease terms with our, our, our landlords, e.g. Uh, the process started back in October 2017 when we, uh, after the sale of this, of this building to e.g., we moved into our temporary digs over at, uh, with our friends at Old Parliament House uh, to allow essential remedial works to be undertaken in this building. And while we were in exile over there at Old Parliament House, it gave us a bit of distance and a bit of time to reconceptualise what this building should be, to really improve and to ratchet up, the, uh, ratchet up the visitor experience here. So we worked up concept plans for redesigned ground floor visitor experience, and when we returned here in late 2018, we were already deep into the detailed um, design phase. And so in partnership with EG, uh, we finalised planning and funding arrangements, uh, and by the middle of 2019, the building works had begun. And also, Sally Barnes, I just want to acknowledge uh, you and the work that the NCA did with us as partners in this project, because it's a very important building, the, the East Block, National Archives, Murulungalung, heritage value, and, and it was that positive partnership with um, NCA also that has allowed this, this project to come to fruition today. 
And I think uh, everybody would agree that the project has delivered wonderful spaces and an exceptional visitor experience. And I hope Your Excellencies are also uh, joining me in that, uh, that assessment after your brief introduction a moment ago. Um, so today we have a new light-filled uh, atrium foyer out the front, um, which also has a, a shop so people can uh, complete their visitor experience by leaving a bit of money at the door and taking away a happy souvenir of their time with us. Uh, as you can enjoy a coffee and a meal over here at our 90-seat Cafe Constitution um, and, again, you know, enhance that visitor experience. Our refurbished research centre at this end of the building uh, has already welcomed researchers from across the country uh, prior to the COVID-19 restrictions. Uh, and the function room we're in right now is also a new innovation. And this offers us all sorts of uh, opportunities for events and meetings, etc. cetera. Uh, we now have three uh, galleries to choose from. We have two permanent galleries and one temporary gallery. Uh, the first gallery, which I hope you'll have the opportunity to visit before you leave us this morning, the first gallery, Mudagadi uh, Connections, uh, is all about archives, people and places, and it reveals how the records held in the National Archives of Australia uh, document the way in which every one of us individually is connected with the Commonwealth. So how, how do we belong to the Commonwealth of Australia? What's our part that we play in the Commonwealth of Australia? How does the government affect us? How do we affect the government? And how do the records in the archives you know, produce the threads that can weave together, connect us all, and, and you know, provide that tapestry that is uh, modern day Australia. Uh, the exhibition holds many original collection items and also boasts the most fantastic digital wall in the world, Absolutely. Carolyn, certainly the biggest in parks, anyway, in the ACT. No, no it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful, no, you'll, you'll love it. Go and have a look at our digital wall. Um, because it does, uh, it, it provides an interactive way to, to call up documents, to connect documents, to explore stories and, and do what you should do in an archive, you know, to, to, to see where your journey of discovery takes you. So that's uh, Muragadi. The second permanent exhibition down there is uh, entitled Dunai, which uh, voices, um, and that's all about federation, democracy and the constitution. And so that exhibition focuses on the creation and the structure and the function of the Commonwealth as defined under the Constitution, um, but especially its relationship with its citizens. Um, importantly, I think, it, it shows uh, that the Constitution is, is still a work in progress. It is, it is something which has held Australia together through many episodes in its history, but it's by no means perfect. It remains a work in progress. And, and a visit to that gallery, and especially for school groups going through, it's a good way to educate Australians about what the Constitution does for you, but what your obligations are for the Constitution. So we talk about referenda, we talk about the voices that went into the Constitution, the voices that perhaps were not heard, as well as those that were heard. Uh, and as you leave that exhibition, uh, hopefully it gives people a sense of an obligation to be involved, to participate, and to use your voice in legitimate ways to create a better Australia. And then finally, we have our temporary exhibition gallery. Uh, right now, it's featuring uh, a latest exhibition, Out of This World, um, Australia in the Space Age. So it's, it's looking at Australia's history from the 50s. Uh, it's probably 1957 is when the Space Age uh, started, perhaps, with the, uh, um, you know, the, the first uh, uh, cosmonaut uh, going out there and with the launch of Sputnik and these sorts of important developments that really uh, ignited the imagination of the world about the possibilities of space. And so that exhibition talks about Australia's experience entering the space age from the 1950s through to the 1970s. Now, it officially opens uh, tomorrow, that exhibition, but all of you, of course, have got a, a golden ticket to go and have a look at that exhibition today and, uh, and please do have a sneak peek um, after the official proceedings this morning. So that's where we're, we've got to today, and that's why I'm so delighted that we are finally having this rather modest event here, but it is being uh, recorded and streamed as well um, for, for a few of our very good friends of the archives to come together and celebrate this moment with us. But most importantly, the person we most want to hear from this morning is uh, His Excellency the Governor-General of the Commonwealth of Australia, General, General the Honourable David Hurley, and I now invite Your Excellency to formally open our redeveloped building. Thank you. Well, David, thank you, and thank you for the very warm welcome. 
for Linda and I to be with you today on a very special occasion in the life of the National Archives. And Paul, can I thank you and David for um, very emotional, I think, a profound uh, welcome to country. It's not often that you get invited to participate. Uh, we're often on the receiving of the message and uh, thank you for the breadth of what you covered, the dignity of it and the very strong message that it sends us all. So and thank you and I join in with you, with you on that welcome. Thank you. Um, again, to all our distinguished guests uh, who are here with us this morning, a very warm welcome and specifically and especially to Margaret, thank you very much for the work you've done and uh, great to have you here this morning on this special occasion. I've noticed today, and I'm sure it's not a coincidence, that uh, it is the International Day for Universal Access to Information. Uh, this is a UNESCO-backed uh, day, a global day, and highlighting the importance of information for that is publicly accessible, particularly in times of crisis. So thank you for the coincidence of the day, David. Well thought out. It's a significant, as I say, and historical occasion in the life of the National Archives. And David, I trust that all the accompanying documentation has been properly preserved, stored and secured Absolutely. in your hands. And I'm also delighted with the choice of Mura Langalang as the bilingual name uh, to describe the purpose and work of the archives here at the National Office because I think it points so strongly to the reconciled nation uh, that we want to become and uh, an important step in doing that. Again, thank you. My attendance here today and the role in opening the building, uh, the reopening this building builds on a long and, as you're aware, recently uh, rejuvenated uh, relationship between the National Archives and the Governor-General, uh, the Office of my official secretary and the archives themselves. Uh, I was reminded um, of a comment made by a Greek uh, diplomat and orator, Eschines, in 336 BC, in his oration which was entitled Against Tesiphon. Now, Tesiphon uh, was another Greek fellow set up by another Greek called Demosthenes to impugn the character of Eschines. And Eschines, after I think presumably drawing on the public archives of Athens, quoted and said in his speech, wonderful, you men of Athens, Wonderful is the custody of public records, for unshakable is the record. I refer to the Kerr papers on that. <laughs> Being asked to give a speech on such occasion as this, of course, invites research for those who are not archivists. And presumably, you know, not surprisingly, I looked into the history of archives. I was surprised to learn as a profession, the very close relationship between arch being an archivist and being a historian, and also that there is a sense of humour amongst archivists. Ernest Posner, a very famous member of the Society of American Archivists, observed in the early 1970s that archivists were practitioners of the world's oldest learned profession, <laughs> but few of them at that time had an understanding of the details of that ancient tradition. But to be serious, as a starting point, I went to a collection of papers edited by the historian uh, Maria Brossius uh, in 2003, which is entitled Ancient Archives and Archival Traditions, Concepts of Record Keeping in the Ancient World. And in an endeavour to come up with a common definition of what an archive was or is in that period, they asked the question, what is an ancient archive? Brocius and her colleagues offered this definition. To be considered an archive, the ruins must contain, firstly, an edifice. Archives are at first a physical space, a palace or a temple complex, or within a private building or a private complex of buildings. And secondly, of course, they are records, a collection of stored documents reflecting a deliberate choice of, or selection, these documents cover a certain period of time, ranging from the number of reigning years of a king, for example, to several generations of a business family. So how apt. Today we stand in the National Archives edifice. The sign to all who enter this old yet now modern building, now and into the future, that this building exists for a very special purpose. 
But why keep records? We know that the National Archives holds almost 40 million records, including records on key events and decisions from Federation, for example, till today. The International Council of Archives on Archives is quite clear on the purpose of archives. Firstly, that archives are a witness to the past. They provide evidence, explanation and justi justification both for past actions and current decisions. Good archives management is not just about storing records for history and research. Archives are central to good governance. Archives and records are the tools by which governments can make themselves accountable and demonstrate their democratic credentials. Well-managed archives and records are the means by which a country can understand the who, the when, the where, the how and the why of government actions. They enable the delivery of human rights and the ability for, ch for a government to explain and defend its actions. Kathleen Rowe, a former president of the Society of American Archivists, in 2016 offered these reasons for archives. Archives provide essential evidence. Archives support the creation of new knowledge. Archives provide a laboratory for students to understand the human experience and archives are important to the cultural heritage of communities. Now these are strong academic arguments for the need for and the purpose of archives, but is there a human side to archives? And the answer of course is a resounding yes. I'm informed it's not uncommon for people to become emotional when they see the names of deceased relatives they never knew handwritten in ink on passenger list of ships that, embarked Europe, that were embarked in European ports bound for Australia after the Second World War. From Linda and my own experience during our first visit to the archives in Mitchell, when we were able to view a collection of family records and how emotional Linda was seeing the handwritten letters uh, from her uh, great uncle who was killed in the uh, First World War, to see his handwriting uh, in front of you. And of course, archives prove that they can enrich and inform at a very personal level for the thousands of Australians who access the service records of family members during the centenary of Anzac commemorations, which have just been completed. This, I believe, is partly behind the reason for the creation of the three uh, information galleries that uh, David has described and can be found in this evidence ed edifice. The galleries not only demonstrate the richness of the archives holdings, but help interpret those holdings in an exciting and an informative manner. They bring the collection to life. And importantly, as David has stressed so many times, the collection is accessible to all, and that is its true value. The new and innovative NAA members program that is also going to be launched today will raise the profile of the archives and build ag advocacy at a local, regional and national level. The national archives certainly have a great story to tell. I thank David as Director General and all the staff at the National Archives of Australia for the remarkable contribution to our country through the management of our national archives. As we look to the future of the national archives in this renewed building, can I speak to Catherine Rowe, or return to Catherine Rowe, and offer you this important question. When people are asked to comment or to describe archives, the answers often involve words like fascinating, interesting, fun and treasures. Compare that to Bishman, uh, Bishop Desmond Tutu's observation that archives are the bulwark of a free society. Which would you rather be, a fascinating treasure or a bulwark of freedom? With that question in mind, it is a great honour for me to declare the National Archives of Australia National Office reopened. Thank you. Thank you very much, Governor General, for that uh, speech, and, and thank you, thank you for such an insightful speech about archives, and even uh, even quoting my international organisation, International Council on Archives, I think it's, uh, it's really great that you have um, given us your reflections and insights on the role and reminded us of the role that we uh, perform here. And you know, it is, uh, 
You know, it's often said that archives keep history safe. And, um, and I think your comments remind us there's another part of that is it's, it's about evidence that we keep here. So we're not keeping a history safe. We're making sure history is never safe. Everybody should have the opportunity to go back to the evidence and see for themselves. And that's how Australia grows and develops, engages in truth telling and the other processes that we need to uh, pursue. And that's what an archives can bring. Um, Your Excellency, as a token of our appreciation today, uh, we've prepared for, for you and Mrs Hurley an album of, of photographs from a government house uh, from the National Archives Photographic Collection, which we, we hope uh, you'll be able to take with you today or we'll certainly have it uh, delivered. The, the album, uh, this was one of two albums that was presented to Her Majesty the Queen and Duke of Edinburgh uh, back in October 2011. Uh, the first album contained photographs of the Duke and Duchess of York at the opening of Parliament House in Canberra in 1927, about the same time this uh, building was put up. And then the second album contained historic images of Government House. Uh, the Queen returned to the United Kingdom with the album, the first album, and then the second album uh, is intended to remain at Government House. And we would love uh, to uh, have it uh, placed in your care and then to remain at Government House for yourselves and future Governors General. Um, finally, um, uh, we will see some uh, beverages, and I promise these are non-alcoholic beverage, being the very respectable institution we are in the, this hour in the morning. Apologies, Christophe, this is a non-alcoholic beverage. Uh, <laughs> it's not French champagne, it will be a, uh, an Australian sparkling non-alcoholic beverage. But I'd like to propose a toast, if I may, to, uh, uh, to uh, the National Archives. Um, as His Excellency has pointed out, today is also, thank you very much, today is also the United Nations Universal Access to Information Day, uh, and I think it might be uh, appropriate to propose a toast to both the National Archives and Universal Access to Information, but may I please, uh, the former President of the Senate, Senator Margaret Reid, I wonder if we might invite you up here to join me propose this toast, because as I mentioned earlier, um, Margaret, it's you that uh, did. We're allowed to sorry, it's very... Uh, I promise I've sanitised my hand. I, I won't. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so Margaret um, uh, opened this building uh, for the National Archives back in 1998, mm -hmm. and we have a commemorative plaque out the front, which still remains in pride of, uh, um, pride of place out the front of the building. So I'd love you to join us in proposing a toast to universal access to information and to the National yes, Archives of Australia. Thank you. The National Archives of Australia, please charge your glasses and join in a toast. Ooh, okay, wait a minute. Ooh. Sorry, I we have to wait. So, Margaret, tell me. Well, uh, <laughs> well, Johnny here today. Yeah, it's a beautiful day. That's very good. Good to know. Very special indeed. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, look, let's, uh, let's not press upon it any longer. Let's propose that toast. So, please, a toast. Toast. The National Archives of Australia. Thank you. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now, thank you very much, Margaret, for allowing us to do that. Thank you for sharing us this event with us today. Thank you once again, Your Excellencies, for, for um, uh, making this occasion so special. Again, can we now um, relax? We have some uh, morning tea uh, to enjoy and uh, to mingle and enjoy one another's company. I do invite you all, before you go, to have a look through our new temporary exhibition, uh, Out of This World, Australia in the Space Age. Uh, and please do come again and enjoy uh, the wonderful, exciting experience of the National Archives. As we say in Nambri Nunawal, Wella Managa. Thank you. And Wurugu Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.